Hey guys, I'm Hugo. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we're going to be making Swede mac and cheese. So I hands down think Swede is a super underrated vegetable. For those of you guys who don't know what Swede is, it's um, this weird looking thing. It's a large root um, and it kind of looks similar to a turnip or a much larger turnip and a lot of people get confused uh, with these with turnips but it's actually a completely different vegetable. It's a really really delicious and versatile vegetable but at the moment it's getting such a massive bad rep for uh, being this really bland boring veggie that's only good for mash or some kind of soups etc. I think it's uh, excellent and I've got a load of recipes on the site that show how versatile it is frying it, making it super crispy, blending it in these really hearty curry sauces. And today, uh, perhaps my favorite recipe of all, we're gonna use it in a mac and cheese. And why are we using it in a mac and cheese? Now, vegan mac and cheeses, I think, suffer from, um, or baked vegan mac and cheeses at least, I think suffer from being overly dry. You know, you've got this, you normally have, you make it with uh, blended cashews or some kind of, flour based mixture that when you put in the oven really dries out and you don't get that kind of um, really moist and chewy aspect that you get with a just a regular mac and cheese. Now in step the Swede our saviour this guy blended into uh, this mac and cheese sauce gives you this amazingly rich and moist mac and cheese sauce which uh, baked is just delicious so you guys are going to see today how awesome this recipe is and how you're going to learn to love Swede, absolutely amazing vegetable. Um, so let's get into the recipe right now. I should say before we start that also, I don't know if I have said already, Swede is commonly called in the US rutabaga. I don't know why it's called a rutabaga. Um, in the UK we call it Swede because its um, origins believed to be from Sweden. So it's called, it was called a Swedish, Swedish turnip and then abbreviated to Swede. Uh, in, in the US, I have no clue why it's called rutabaga. Maybe if someone knows, add it in the comments section and let me let me let me understand. Um, just one of those things, I guess. Anyway, let's get into the recipe. So to prep this Swede mac and cheese, the first thing we're going to do is parboil around 800 grams of uh, pasta. And here I have just macaroni pa um, pasta, but you can use any kind of shapes you want. So let's place this in here and. Add about three teaspoons of salt. You want a, a decent amount of salt in there. And I'm just gonna freshly pour over some boiled water. And then we're just gonna cook this vigorously. We're gonna bring it to the boil for half of what the packet instructions say. So that's normally about three or so minutes. Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna check the pasta is done. I'm just gonna grab one of these. Yep, that's look, tasting good. Um, and so now what we wanna do is, we're gonna drain the pasta, but um, with a little bit of a zero waste hack, you wanna drain the pasta into a pan that you're gonna cook the Swede and other stuff later. So grab a colander and put it over your pan, so it should be large enough to hold a colander, and we'll just tip the pasta in. And not only is this great because it's gonna save you water and save the planet, but also um, it's gonna give the veggies a lovely taste because of that nice salty um, and starchy pasta water. Okay, let's put that back on there. Okay, now the, uh, the, the pasta is done, what we wanna do is cook off our Swede and um, veggie mixture that we're gonna blend into the sauce later. So I'm just gonna peel and dice this Swede um, and whack it into this cooking broth. Okay, so Swede prepped. So we're looking for, um, to dice it around a one centimeter size, just like that. Um, and if I, haven't, if I haven't said already, you want a, a Swede which is around 700 grams or so, which is roughly how they normally come. So a good medium-sized Swede is about 
700 grams, um, but just check w quickly weighing it before you, you go on to dicing it. Um, right, now we're gonna just into that cooking mixture that I placed this weed, just wanna put two onions and two cloves of garlic that we're gonna roughly dice here. Okay, so we've got our veggies chopped in here and now we're just gonna bring this to the boil and simmer that mixture for about 15 to 20 minutes um, until the swede is nicely soft. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes. Um, I'm just gonna check that our swede is cooked. Um, how I'm gonna do that is just take a fork and prick one of these swede and it should just be really easy to go through, very soft. Those look pretty uh, cooked and good to go. So let's turn that off. And I'm just gonna drain this veg mixture. All right, that's nicely drained. I'll just leave that on the side and let's clear out a bit here. So now we're gonna move on to creating the sauce. So I'm gonna switch this out um, for a blender and speak a bit. Okay, so we've got our trusty blender here. And the first thing I'm going to do is blend 200 grams of cashews with um, some water. Now these cashews need to be soaked um, overnight, preferably, or if you can't, if you have forgotten to soak them overnight, um, and like me, uh, what you can do is just soak them in boiling, freshly boiled water for 30 minutes. And we're gonna add, as I said, 100 ml of just plain water to that, and then we just blitz it until it's a smooth paste. Okay, that's looking good. So yeah, you want your cashew mixture to be pretty, um, pretty paste-like, but don't worry if you've got bits of cashew up, up the side of your blender. When we add in the veg stuff, it's gonna get combined anyway, so don't worry. Um, okay, to this cashew mixture, we're gonna add six tablespoons of nutritional yeast, um, a teaspoon of uh, mustard powder. Now the actual recipe is for two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, which is much preferable, but I actually don't have Dijon mustard in the house today, so mustard powder works just fine as well. Um, and then we've got two teaspoons of miso paste and half a teaspoon of white pepper powder. And I'm just gonna add just about a teaspoon of salt for good measure. And we wanna just tip in all of the veggies into the mix. Careful not to get it on your surfaces because it will go everywhere. Right, let's lock and load this and then again, we wanna whiz this into a smooth paste. So just keep on blitzing it until you reach that consistency. Okay, we've nicely blended this down and it's looking really thick and really creamy. I'll give you a show of what it looks like on the camera. But so you can see there that it's really nice and thick and it's, you see how smooth that, that consistency is and that's what you want really. That swede to be completely disappeared into the mixture and um, everything combined nicely and evenly. Now we want to combine our pasta and our sauce into a large oven dish. Just take your pasta and work it in. Okay, and then just spoon over your um, sauce. It's a large amount of sauce there and you just want to mix it in just combine it until it's evenly combined with the pasta okay that's looking about right so as you can see there it's evenly combined and this lovely rich creamy sauce which is looking great already okay so the final thing we want to do to our mac and cheese is we're just going to top it with some breadcrumbs so here i have three slices of plain white bread uh, whatever bread you have lying around is absolutely fine I'm just gonna toast this now um, so it dries out a little bit. Right, so I've now toasted these uh, slices of bread in the toaster, just a regular toaster, and we're just gonna blitz 
this up into uh, breadcrumbs. So we just just wrap, roughly tear them into the food into a food processor like this, and then just blitz it. All right. Once you've blended those down, it's just a matter of just tipping over your mac and cheese. So we've got a great coverage of breadcrumbs over the top of our mac and cheese there. I'm just going to sprinkle some uh, kosher salt over the top of this and then just give a nice drizzle of olive oil over the top. So these these breadcrumbs are going to crisp up. So we're going to bake this now in an oven at 200 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes until the top breadcrumbs are nicely crispy and golden brown and the bottom of the pasta is really nice and rich. Okay, I'm going to put this in now. All right, it's been 15 minutes and I've just taken uh, this mac and cheese out of the oven and you can see it's wonderfully crisped up, lovely, uh, nice golden brown um, breadcrumbs at the top which are going to be really really crunchy and I can just see at the sides here this wonderfully oozing swede uh, sauce. Yep, that's it. Swede mac and cheese done. Thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. Hopefully it's has shown you how amazing, versatile and awesome Swede is. So please, next time you go into the supermarket, pick one of these bad boys up and try it out for size. Um, as I said at the start of the video, I think they're super underrated and there's a load of ways you can use them. There's a load of recipes on my site that I'll link in the description below that show you how versatile it is. Um, but this vegan mac and cheese recipe is my personal favorite way to use it. and when you try it out for yourself you'll see how the sauce is just pure sorcery it is absolutely delicious and creamy salty umami and amazing um, if you have any questions or comments about this video please leave them in the section below um, and as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time